Hi friends, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiara, this is The Black Dress Diaries, and today we are trying vegan spam. <laughs> so technically this is a vegan meat style luncheon. I guess spam off-brand is called luncheon meat to my knowledge. Um, I've always just called it spam because that's all I know. But uh, yeah, the spam is uh, the brand, kind of like Kleenex is to tissue. But that's what we're going to be trying today. This brand is Omnipork and it was released in Asia a little bit ago, but it's only recently, I believe spring 2021, but I could be wrong, released in the States, which is where I am located, if you couldn't tell by my accent. And so I've been really excited to try this. I didn't grow up eating a lot of Spam, but I definitely haven't had Spam before. And then because I grew up military, um, Spam wasn't just like hidden in the bottom shelf of the commissary, the military grocery store. It like had its own section. <laughs> um, because uh, all the international cuisine in the commissary was a lot bigger of a deal than it is in your like standard local grocery store here in the States. So I always liked ham as a kid. And so I was, I remember asking, even though like, you know, when you know the answer to the question, but when you're a kid, you ask it a million times anyway. And I was like, how is it ham in a can? Like I would ask my mom that all the time, every time we would go to the grocery store, I was fascinated by it. So you know, I've had it before and I've definitely had like other kinds of like canned ham, but it's been, a long time so I'm really excited about this because I just am <laughs> so uh, I guess I'll give you nutritional facts and stuff about it um, if knowing that information does not serve you I will put on the screen where you can skip Okay, so just on the front, it says that it's going to be 50% less sodium than generic luncheon meat. And then on the back, it tells you one piece is 70 calories and it has 5 grams of fat. It has 200 milligrams of sodium, which does sound a lot less than I would have expected from a spam product. One gram of fiber. I think we all know fake meat is never, you know, your best source of fiber. Uh, 5 grams of protein, which is... I think decent for something this tiny. I don't know. Maybe as I go through this, I will put on the screen what the calories or nutritional information and stuff is for spam versus this for like a piece. I guess that would be an equivalent size. Um, there are six servings per container. So there are six of these little, little dudes. What I like is that this is a very thin packaging, so it doesn't take up that much space in my freezer. Ingredients are water, soy protein isolate, coconut oil, yeast extract, wheat gluten. Oh, this is where we're getting to what I can't pronounce. Methyl cellulose, I believe. Uh, soy protein isolate. Oh, I guess the other one was soy protein concentrate. I don't know what I said. Potato starch, natural flavor, salt, beet powder for color. Um, okay, so only one thing I could not figure out. But yes, so that is if that's something that serves you. Oh, cholesterol is usually no cholesterol, like most meat, uh, meatless products. Um, that's the biggest draw for me as someone who has a family history of heart disease. But you didn't come here for that. You came here to see how this stuff tastes. So we're going to open it up. This is what it looks like in its packaging. So it's got these little individual trays that it's in. Um, interestingly enough, it's not quite as uniform looking as I thought it would, um, which I think is kind of cute. I thought it was gonna look very assembly line, like perfection. But as you can see, this guy's got a little chippage here and it's got kind of a ground look to it. I don't know if I'm not good at this whole makeup youtuber thing yeah so that's interesting to me um let's see how it tells me to cook it even veggies and bread not included thank you for that ready in four minutes cook thoroughly from frozen okay so we've got my beautiful pan from my mommy and daddy for christmas thank you and we've got my sad i lost the lid to it sorry my computer is making so many noises um Canola oil is what we're gonna use. Just a tiny bit because there is some fat in this, but it's not like a beyond meat, impossible meat kind of fat. And then I guess we're gonna put this on medium heat because this is a pretty 
chunky pan we're working with and it took so long to set this up but i think we're gonna have to move you closer so you can see how this looks all right pan is feeling pretty warm are we gonna cut it in half yeah i'm gonna cut it in half and sorry if you hear the rice boiling let's see if we can hear a pan sizzle though beautiful i'm gonna turn the heat down just a little bit and it said four minutes so let's be technical and do two minutes on each side here we go because i know that i put it a little sooner than Ooh, she a little stickier than i thought she would be oh nope oh man ah chaos so this is technically cast iron, so I can do this to this pan, but this is gonna take some getting used to emotionally. All right, well, some of that stuck to the bottom, but it looks good. Okay, actually, according to Google, you can use metal on this pan, but it's not really recommended. It says use with care. So we're not gonna do that, and we are going to Go back to using wood like I'm used to. I'm gonna cancel that timer. Oh, maybe not. There we go, cancel the timer. This is difficult, but we're being authentic here. Oh man, <laughs> yep, so um, maybe don't skimp on the oil when you do this. But here we go. Here's our very golden, crispy, and half off piece of faux spam. Here's our spam. Let's see. Fingers crossed I don't drop this. I'm not very good with chopsticks. <laughs> and there it is. Okay. It smells like pretty standard fake meat. And we're gonna give it a try. Wow. That's much juicier than I expected it to be. For it to be as difficult as it was to cook. Not cook, but get off the pan. Okay, this is great. Definitely not as salty as what I remember Spam being, but definitely has a distinct hammy pork flavor and the outside crisped beautifully. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really good. I don't think it's necessarily going to fool anybody who, like, is obsessed with Spam. But I think that's most fake meats. I think it's definitely going to fulfill that placement, though, if you are looking for a replacement. Or if you're not, like, Spam is life, um, then that's going to be, like, good enough to be able to get your recipes that you want with it. That was, that was really good. That was much more delicious than I thought it was going to be, based upon the fat content and the salt content. I didn't think it was gonna be that like tasty and juicy, but yeah, it's got that smokiness that I always feel like pork has more than other meats. And it's salty though, not as salty as I remember Spam being and juicy. Like I'm, I'm surprised. Yeah, that was, that was very good. And now we're gonna try to make some musubi, which I have never made before. So I looked up uh, plenty of Hawaiian bloggers recipes and it sounds like it's basically spam with a teriyaki sauce although i don't know if in hawaii teriyaki sauce is prepared a little bit more differently than in japan or if it's just um with musubi that it's prepared like this but so a couple of vlogs i saw and i'll link everything that i utilized for this no, I'm not giving you guys a recipe. I'm just showing you what I'm doing, um, but I'll show you all of everything that I looked at I'll leave that in the comments below, but it seemed like a lot of them were soy sauce mixed with sugar and it's my understanding that teriyaki is sake and um, soy sauce and maybe some sugar um, What I'm going to do because I don't have sake and I think I would prefer like a more classic what I know to be a more classic teriyaki sauce. Um, I'm gonna use mirin because I'm almost out of it anyway. And then I have some soy sauce. So I'm gonna mix that up in this jar that I have that doesn't have a lid. And then I'm not gonna put sugar in it because mirin is sweeter than sake. And I think that a tablespoon of each is plenty. 
I'm the only one eating this, so it doesn't matter about germs. Don't come for me. Tastes great. Okay. Actually, I might do a hit more mirror. I think it's supposed to be 50-50, but I do like a little bit of that extra extra mirror. Ooh, rice is almost done. Perfect timing. And I'm going to put some more oil on this pan. I just had a second where I was like, what if I'm not recording? We're going to do like half a tablespoon of oil this time instead of that very conservative teaspoon. Roll this bad boy around some. Oh, we're going to take off this little stray piece. Turn the pan on medium low. I guess we will call that. Ah, there's so much like <laughs> frost on my freezer. I just got attacked, which reminds me I have aprons. Catch this apron made from an old tablecloth or curtain. I'm not sure which one from a thrift store being featured on my mom's future Etsy shop after they move and she's able to make stuff. I love it. It's got pockets because it's made from either curtain or tablecloth. It's sturdy and I like the style because I can put it over my big old head and big old hair. Welcome back. Here we go. More oil hopefully means more success. Here and here. And I'm also going to like roll it in some of this oil before I let it just sit there. I think that's about as good as we're gonna get. Everything's gonna start to stick to the pan. So here we go. We're gonna turn the heat up a little bit. Hopefully I don't get anything on the lens. Woo! Maybe turn it down a little bit. I didn't know if it was gonna be that warm or not. Okay, now I think I could probably turn it down in a second. It's starting to simmer down there. I'm gonna flip it once just to make sure I'm getting everything coated in here. Oh yeah, you can already see we're getting a little color. I'm gonna flip it again. Ooh, that looks so good. All right, that looks nice and sticky, so I'm gonna put that on here so that I don't lose so, so much glaze. Same with this little guy. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. And this pan's gonna be awful to clean. Alrighty, moving over this way, we've got our beautiful resting faux luncheon meat chilling over here. Now we're gonna take our pot of rice. So we're just gonna fluff it up. This is a mix of white and brown. The brown is medium green and the white is short green so that we could have some stickiness maybe a little too sticky this rice cooker is not the best at cooking rice mixed i'm gonna put some of this in this bowl okay i actually have some furikake that i took from my sister and just put in this garlic jar and so i am going to mix that in there you can also put it i think on top of the rice or on top of this fam, but I think I like to have the texture and flavors fully incorporated. I'm gonna let that cool down a little bit. Definitely a little too much water in this rice, but that's okay. Got my nori sushi. And from everything I've read, it sounds like you cut this up in thirds for musubi. Only ever used it for sushi. Did I call this nori sushi? I meant nori seaweed, but so seaweed has the smooth side and the not smooth side, the textured side, and so you want textured, so textured side up for your usage, and I cut it into thirds. This knife is terrible. So I don't have one of those little shapers 
for musubi so i'm just gonna try to mold it on my own with my little spready knife and my hands and we're just gonna hope for the best but it is quite sticky so best might be a loose term I know if you have spam, you can use the can to help your shape, but I guess that's the that's the downfall of this. I think we're gonna use this guy. It's gonna look so ugly. <laughs> use this little guy. Um, I didn't actually look at like how to wrap this, I just, I guess, assumed I was going to go off of vibes, but I guess I just wrap a couple times. The only thing I did see was the ceiling portion. You could use a piece of ricer too. There's your little natural glue to close it up. And they made it look like it was just going to do it. <laughs> I guess because I have brown rice. And brown rice is not as soft or sticky, especially since I used a medium grain. There we go. Seems so like your rice goop, not necessarily the rice. And here we are. Our beauty. She's beauty and she's grace. And she's not focusing at all. There she is. There we go. Da 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 da. Looks much better on this end than on this end. All right, so now that I've made this bad boy, let's try it out. It's delicious. It's salty. Got that oceaniness from the seaweed. Mm. I think I should have let my rice cool a little bit more, but I was so hungry. Um, but yeah, if you actually like used the tool you're supposed to to smush it together or let your rice cool a little bit further, it's like such a good portable snack and oh my gosh it's so good you can totally see why this is so popular in hawaii all right everyone well thank you so much for watching this video uh thank you for exploring the world that is vegan luncheon meat uh with me i have had the hiccups all day i was worried they were gonna come back for the video here we go okay let's try to wrap this up if you made it all the way to the end of this video though comment furikake down below because i'm curious how many because I'm curious of how many of you made it to the end of this video. Um, like I said, thank you so much. If you have made um, musubi before and have any advice whatsoever, please comment it down below. Um, and any other things I can make with this vegan, vegan spam, because I know I can make fried rice. Um, I don't know. Tell me what else you think I can make with it. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like me, subscribe to my channel. And thanks again so much for watching. Happy New Year, everyone. Bye.